need to start with these big flakes to start to form this axis. If I'm really working like a Neolithic mapper, I won't just take flakes off just for the fun of it. I'll try and use this quite efficiently. So these flakes that I take off, I could use for something else. Uh, and that's almost certainly what would have happened around here. If someone had got their hands on this around here or managed to trade for it or find it, um, then you're looking at many, many tools out of this. To get one tool out of this is incredibly wasteful. Uh, so I'll see what I can get out of it. Stuff, it's just the cortex and um, it covers the flint. Now this is from <coughs> chalk, this flint from chalk quarrying. The pebble one you can just port side pebble from the beach, it's nothing too fancy, it's just quite hard. You notice I'm holding it quite a steep angle and I'll always strike the edges. I will never strike in the middle. I'll encourage the shock to start at the edge and go underneath flake drop off the bottom. It's soon count, quite counterintuitive. I'm hitting the top and flakes coming off the bottom. Um, you'll get used to the idea of it and hopefully the mechanics of it as I go through it. So there's my first flake. It'd be quite a good scrape flake that one. It's got a really nice curve to it. Um, so that might be one to save. But uh, you can see there's a great big flat surface at the top. That's the platform. If you look on the underside, the fresh side has got a bulb on it where I'm moving my thumb, that's the bulb of the cushion. Um, archaeologists will generally call this flat, concave face the ventral face, whereas the convex face with the ridges is known as the dorsal face. So another useful plate that can be used for a number of things, but I've already started to take off a lot of material. Uh, I can start working on both sides now and start to create a bit of a zigzag along the edge. This is known as alternate flaking. You can just work on alternate sides. For my axe you saw the little axe that went round. It has <coughs> really a lens profile if you hold it on the side. Um, it's got bump on both sides. So to do an axe head, I need it to be fairly equal all the way along. I don't want it to be too thick in places because it won't fit into a wooden handle particularly easily. And if you were to grind it, you're just adding hours onto your working time. Good look at it, you'll see just how sharp it is. 
but that would be a perfect knife straight off. You don't need to do any further work. If I was to retouch that to give it the shape, I would be blunt in it. So this is pretty much at the rough out stage now. Um, this is really the, the next stage in the axe making process. This is quite a recognisable form. Um, if I was a, in a location where this rock naturally occurs, I've taken off probably about 60 to 70 percent of the mass. Um, and if I was going to transport this elsewhere, perhaps back to my house to then take off these fine flakes that I could use for something else, I swear I'd do it. Um, but uh, as I'm not going to be going anywhere today, I'll uh, be continuing the process, hopefully, to finish that. Flint napping is not a test of strength in any way at all. Um, so if I could do this when I was 10, um, so I think I'm a bit stronger than I was then. Um, so it's really a test of accuracy and hand-eye coordination. Um, some of these platforms I'm aiming for are only a few millimetres thick. Um, and I have to have that confidence in myself that I can strike it consistently. Because if I miss, I can crush the platform. If it's a very thin toy, I could completely destroy it. So it, it's really starting to look like an accent now. It's, it's still a bit thick and rough and uneven in places, but hopefully I can be able to even that out. So I'm starting to just gently work around the edges now. I'm taking the occasional slightly longer plate. I'm shaping it, but I'm setting up um, options and opportunities for the last few flakes, really. I need that nice, clean, consistent edge to get good flakes. So I was going to make an early Neolithic axe head, which are usually quite thick and quite rounded at the edges, not like the square sides that the little Langdale axe head uh, has. I would probably leave it there because it's nice and thick, and you probably grind off maybe about a centimetre off the sides, which would be big investment of time. Um, so what I'm doing is I've taken out a bit of material on that side, it's already dipped on that side, so I've isolated this thick area over the surface. So that should encourage the shock to stay in this area rather than go anywhere else. And giving myself the best chance of undercutting this. Um, it's just the end time of the piece of antler put it up against the edge and try and beat off one end. It's just a wooden mallet. I'm just changing the angle of the edge so I can get the slightly steeper flake into that uh, little problem area that I've identified. I've felled a few trees uh, in my time with stone axes for research. Uh, I think my best time was on a 40 to 50 year old, old oak tree, about that kind of thickness, and felled it with an axe head about that size in 40 minutes. If you look at uh, an edge under a microscope, as long as it's been preserved quite well and hasn't been knocked around in the soil, you can actually tell what it's been used for. It builds up different kinds of polish on the edge. I'm not a massive fan of making arrowheads because it's a hard work and incredibly boring. But they do look nice. <laughs> so I've just roughened up that edge. That's all I've done. And then, as I said before, I'm going to put the edge of the pre pressure flake up against the edge, like so. I'm going to put the pad up against the inside of my thigh and simply push. And that's it. And you can see. Having seen some tests of firing these, these will fly like a brick, um, not very well. It could be for killing fish, not firing them. It could be, yeah. It could be for causing sort of sudden shock. Uh, it has been suggested that these could be to stun animals because they won't go very deep, or for hunting people. Um, because, you know, if you get something like that hit you on the ribs, it will put you on the ground. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm <laughs> 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 